Well, welcome everybody to this new episode of the Spiritual Healing and Evolution podcast with Bonnie Seratori. And I'm the co-host, Cynthia. And today we're going to be talking about hauntings. Bonnie is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And we're going to start by sharing some of our own ghost haunting stories. And then we'll get into some questions after that. I have a lot of good questions for Bonnie and Mm -hmm. stick till the end because Bonnie will give you the information you need to learn how to clear a a space, maybe a home or a different location that may be haunted by either a ghost or perhaps like negative stagnant energies. So that will be a great tip for the end of the podcast. How about sharing your stories? Okay. So Actually, I'll just share some, uh, when I was young, like a little, little, really young, the house we lived in, it was absolutely had, had ghosts in it for sure. I mean, they would move my shoes and I would do things like I would put them in a certain place. And I actually talked to my entire family said, is anybody moving my shoes? And they're looking at me like, what? No, no one's moving your shoes. So I would put them in certain places and go to bed. And the next morning they would be way, way under the bed or somewhere way across the room or something. Okay, so that continued. And then I then I the neighbor girl who I didn't hang out with very often, but occasionally I just happened to go over her house one day. We were in her room and she started talking about her shoes being moved around. For some reason, these ghosts had something about it, the shoes. OK, so we shared stories and discovered that, yeah, there actually is someone here in, in the area moving our shoes. There really is some ghosts. And I also had experiences where. They would be whoever, I don't know who they were, but they would jump on my bed I, and hit my body and different things like that were actually happened in my, in my house, in my room. We didn't do anything with them because back then I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I know now, of course, and I was very young, but it was my intro into there are things that we cannot see with our eyes that are very real. Okay. So that was a, that was an experience, direct experience. And then as a, about third, fourth grade, <clears throat> I used to do seance. We'd do seances kind of things. And we'd be doing things like we'd have the neighborhood kids come on over and we'd put have someone go in another room. And then we'd say, okay, and let's have them like maybe pick up the ashtray or grab the phone or something. You know, we'd all have to decide what we were going to do and what they have them do. And so we'd also lay people on the floor and we'd lift our hands on top of them and lift their bodies up. And this is in that same area, same area where these ghosts were. So um, anyway, people would go out and, and I, one time I did it and I literally could feel, you know, cause you kind of trip out on this and, and I didn't know how it really worked. But what happened was, is I felt something pushing on my legs to make me walk in a certain direction. Okay. And I don't remember, cause it was like, like I said, this was back way back. And I don't remember exactly what I was supposed to do, but whatever it was, I could feel my body being pushed and there was nobody there. Okay. No humans were there, but I could feel it would almost, it was almost like, like, you know, when the wind is pushing you, like it's really windy out and you got like a jacket on, you can just feel yourself being moved. You're not really being, you don't feel being touched, but you feel yourself being moved. Okay. So that kind of thing went on. We did that quite a bit. So that was always fun. And then when I got older, <laughs> my this is this is kind of a trip because this is when we started getting into um, we started opening up ourselves to uh, speaking with the dead, speaking, speaking with you know uh, discarnates, things of that nature. A lot of really scary things happened. But um, one time it was myself, my sister, and my sister in law. We were all hanging out and <clears throat> in Happy Valley area. And we're out in the country. We're out in the country and. We were sitting in the bedroom on the bed. We were just talking because we when we we get together, we're always talking about you know things like ghosts and things like that. So anyway, we're sitting on the bed talking, and pretty soon, I don't remember who it was, but one of us said, "Let me okay." So it was happening. Then there was wallpaper on the wall. Okay, what started happening is all these demonic faces started presenting on the wall, on the wallpaper coming through. So we're all sitting there, you know, talking, talking. And pretty soon one of us says, does anybody see the wallpaper? We both, all the, all three of us go, yes. And we run out of the room, you know, because it was freaked us out because we were dealing with 
really intense, dark energy, like demonic energy. So we, you know, we knew we had to, to deal with it. You can't just leave it in the house. As my sister lived here, you know, in her bedroom. That's where the wallpaper was. So we, I, we did some kind of um, exorcism kind of thing to get, you know, to get the bad spirits out of the house, get, you know, get them out and, and release so that, you know, we, we, we didn't have to be afraid anymore and have that happen. And Wait, so was the wall actually protruding out like the wallpaper? Yeah, it was moving. Like, like if this is, if this is wallpaper, hang on, what do I got here? <laughs> Let's just say that. This is the wallpaper, okay, like this. This is the wallpaper. Well, all of a sudden, these it had some patterns on it, but pretty soon it was like de demon faces coming through, moving, moving, coming through, okay? So it freaked us out, freaked us out, <laughs> like for real, okay? In that same time period, see, I was living in Carson City. My sister was li living in Happy Valley, which was a couple hours away, and... And when I went home, because we were hit, we had opened up the channels for all these beans and something came through because one night I was sitting over, I was sitting on the couch crocheting, my son was in bed and just keep in mind, he's, you know, he's, he's little, he's a, you know, he's a toddler, barely, you know, crawling toddler. So I put the rails up on the crib and he couldn't get out. So I'm sitting crocheting and all of a sudden I hear this blood curdling screaming. And I ran down the hallway, I opened the door, and there's this energy, light energy above my son. He's on the floor screaming, crawling, trying to get out. How he got out of his crib, I have no idea, but he he was just screaming. So I grabbed, you know, I grabbed him. It's still gives me goosebumps thinking about this. And I grabbed him, pulled him out, closed the door. And back then I didn't really know what to do with this kind of thing. I mean, this was like really intense. So we ended up moving. But it took me a couple of years to feel my son was safe because they were, it, whatever it was, was after my son. And so I kept him, you know, sleeping close to me in the room or um, and then we, when we did move, I was always like worried that something was going to come. And there where we did move to, there were other things happening and other little cre deep beings that were presenting, but not that demonic, like that evil kind of energy. So that was really, really intense, terrified me, traumatized me. And like I said, you know, I was afraid for my son's life and that they were going to take him, you know, for several years. So um, that was very intense. Um, yeah. And, but, I, you know, it's like, <laughs> I have a lot of things too. Just, I've done house clearings. I've done things where, you know, things are, people are moving, you know, the ghosts are moving things or they're talking or they're doing stuff. They don't want people there. And so, you know, clearing, clearing getting the ghosts out of the houses. So I've done many, many of those. And again, I used to go ghost hunting and things. Like that. <laughs> and so, we were into it. Yeah. So sometimes hauntings aren't just like a discarnate, a dead person. Like you were saying, it could be right. demonic forces or even maybe some other type of interdimensional. Right. Yes. So um, is yes. there a distinction between, because I, when I think of like a poultry guys, I think that's demonic, but a normal haunting is like a dead person. So is there yes, distinction normal, like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Normal okay. hauntings are normal, are people, people that have died. They don't want to let go. They don't want to move on. Some people don't know they have died and they're, you know, they get upset when someone comes into their space. And so they, the, the more emotion that a, uh, a ghost has, the more ability they have to move energy, to move things. Um, and sometimes you'll just maybe hear them or sense them or see silhouettes. But d the people, that's the easy one. You know, those are easy to clear out. When we're dealing with things like the demonic stuff or interdimensional beings, alien things, creatures, and then other other things that have pierced our dimension. You know, like there's a lot of things that we I find in people that are coming from other dimension, different critters and type things that are in their bodies. So things pierce the dimensions, pass through different portals and things like that and come into our dimension. So we do have things coming from all over. We've got what I call the, the reptilian world. That's reptil reptilians and they look like reptiles. They also look like, um, uh, like and they're kind of a human reptilian kind of creature looking thing. There's all kinds of species of those on their particular planet. Um, then we have, uh, you know, the galactic beings, different species that have come to our, our, our area. 
So there, I mean, there, it's just crazy how many things are here that people don't really know about. I think the main thing is when you got a poltergeist, um, you know, you're dealing with very intense, powerful, potent energy. And it's usually very, doesn't necessarily mean it's demonic, but it's going to mean when there's a poltergeist, there's energy, there's big energy, like there's dark energy. There's uh, when someone, perhaps a being is really intensely angered or wants to cause harm or, you know what I mean? They're disturbed, highly disturbed being. It can be a human that's disturbed, okay? And it can be many together that are working for the pol doing a poltergeist together. So it just depends. But yeah, the easy ones to clear are just your normal hauntings, things of that nature, intergalactic and you know alien stuff easy to clear but the the hard ones the big ones are like that the poltergeist and the demonic energies those are the more challenging ones to clear so i have a question about like we're multi-dimensional beings right we we're all of us exist in different planes of existence like consciousness so when you think of a typical haunting let's say a, a person a ghost is haunting a home what part of their consciousness is actually doing the haunting? Because I assume that they're existing in different ways. Maybe they actually reincarnated as a, like another human too, right? On living in the world. So like, mm -hmm. what what is it? Is it just like an energy imprint sometimes or like the actual soul? Yeah, it's more like the consciousness. Like if you look at the soul, like we all have a, you know, a frequency of our consciousness, which we, that is that, that, never dies okay so that's not that it's not a physical tangible energy it is consciousness basically so when we have consciousness we can be particled in our consciousness meaning we could have thousands of particles of consciousness that is me that can be anywhere anytime time space dimension universe galaxy lifetimes realities black holes parallels realms frequencies all existence all simultaneously okay so when you think about awareness Everyone has the same awareness. So you, you're aware, I'm aware. The awareness isn't our thoughts, it isn't our mind. The awareness is that aware, like I'm aware of my own, what I'm seeing with my eyes. I can, it's like a different shifting of our within the self where I'm actually now really paying attention to my awareness. I'm aware maybe of my hand movements. I'm aware of my voice, I'm aware. So that awareness is, isn't something we can grab hold of. But that, that awareness that we are is the eternal. It is our soul essence, our soul energy. So with that kind of awareness, it's the same. Your awareness, my awareness, the all, all awareness is exactly the same. We all are the same awareness. So when we have uh, splits or we're in different time, space, dimension, galaxies, lifetimes, whatever, it's our awareness. Okay, so ultimately... You know, what we're moving towards is more of a wholeness of the soul components coming together, uh, retrieving all the different pieces, essences, where we're left or cast out or uh, taken, whatever, or stolen. So what we really want is really coming in here with as much of our own awareness of much of our own soul essence and energy as we possibly can. Because this, you know, we're we are aware of this lifetime and our consciousness, and when we when we're another time space dimension, that's also where we are aware. Okay, so since we're right here and we're talking about life right here, then of course this is where we're going to want to be. So I would be pulling my awareness from other places. It doesn't mean that I can't take my awareness and be other parts, places, dimensions where I I am and other time and space or other alternate realities. But this is the this is the particular physical form that I'm living in that my awareness is very aware of in this moment right here, right now. So ultimately, you know, like you said, we're multidimensional, we're all over the place and we right. have awareness. And then that's how we uh, we how how we connect, how we know it's all through the awareness. <laughs> right, Bonnie, I was uh, trying to link that in with like uh, the haunting idea. So let me ask you a little bit differently is. Um, Let's say in a past life, me, I was like, maybe I was murdered in a home or something mm -hmm. in my home. And I, it was really traumatic. And, but I reincarnated here as Cynthia. So could there be an aspect of me that's haunting that place, moving, moving things around there? There can be, there and, can be. 
it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when when a haunting occurs, it could be any of those types of things where maybe it, someone yeah. was, uh, yeah, yeah. So could you talk about maybe a little bit about the different uh, ways that things are like people are uh, are imprinted into <laughs> location? Yeah. So like what you're saying, you can something can happen to you. There can be a violent death. Um, there can be light experiences in, in your life where you're, where you're going to die and you don't want to leave somebody or someone loves you. So they hold on to a part of you, an essence of you. It doesn't stop you from going into the light incarnating and an essence of you will still be left in that particular area or with that person, you know, so, and you could be have an attachment to your home or you have a, you know, something where you want, you don't want to leave something. So you, you leave an essence, a part of your soul essence. This is why we why I call it the essence because it isn't just so pieces. It's essence. Sometimes it's like little tiny specks of energy consciousness that could be like minute, and you can have thousands of energy consciousnesses that are minute, and you could be in multi places in any time and space. So when we're looking at this lifetime in our world, planet Earth, and what we've lived, I'm sure that most everyone has parts of them left in past lives. Because either of wanting revenge or wanting retribution or loving someone or not wanting to let go or, you know, any multitude of reasons why we hold on to anything or anyone can be the reason why we will split off and leave, leave self behind. This is actually reminding me of another story that's kind of cool. When I was visiting in Hawaii, there's this place called the Plantation and, and it's an inn. All they have these little cottages. These cottages were... The, the houses that the slave or the peoples that were working lived in and not slave, but they were lived in these cottages when they worked on plantations. And we were visiting and my friend, her name is Cynthia. She goes, oh, there's a place, there's a place here that's haunted because even the workers won't go in there. And when people try to stay, they won't stay, they leave. And so I said, well, how's it, how come someone hasn't cleared it? And she goes, I don't know. I go, well, come on, let's go check it out. So we go, we go to the house, we stand right in front of the, the building, the little house, little cottage. And I tuned in, the woman was beaten to death. She had five children and she was uh, beat, bludgeoned to death and her own, she was trying to crawl back into her house when she died. So what was happening is when anybody would come in, she thinks those were the attackers and she would attack them. So here I am, so Cynthia's right here. Look, you know, watching me, I got my, I start to tune in to the woman. The moment I tuned into her, she attacked me. Cynthia watched my body get blown back for real. Cause she hit me hard. The woman just like attacked me and she, she jumped on me, hit me. And I flew back and I immediately started communicating with her, letting her know that I wasn't the one that caused her harm. I wasn't the one who hurt her. And then I got her attention and she was worried about her children so I showed her, you know, where her children were. Uh, this had been like 70 years ago. So some of her kids were not even alive anymore. But I showed, you know, I could see the energy frequencies. I showed her all her children. And then finally she left and went up in the light. And now that room can now be, that little, that little cottage can be rented and nobody's being attacked. So that was kind That's of cool. really cool. Funny. Um, yeah. And this is something you teach people too, right? You have a training for home clearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, it's the online one. Yeah, you can learn how to do it on your own. Yeah, clear out energies. Yeah. Is it like any type of haunting, including maybe the more dark stuff? Well, that one, it's not really so much a, a dark haunting. It's more clearing out the energies. Um, like, for example, in that particular video, someone did was someone died in one of those rooms, one of the bedrooms. Okay, so we want to get those energies out. So you're, you know, you're dealing with energy and, and negative energy things of that nature so yeah it's not a demonic one but it is a, a learning how to do their house yeah okay so uh, in terms of some hauntings like certain locations tend to be more haunted than like others is mm -hmm. that just because of the frequency of like people dying and such right and does that open portals if like there's a, like in yeah. a hospital maybe Oh, yeah. Hospitals are notorious. Those are some of the worst places. Hospitals, uh, those care homes where people get elderly care homes, things like that. People, yeah, the, the, a lot of death happens. The biggest thing is sometimes people don't want to die. They don't want to leave. So they'll, they'll stick around and hang out and try to come into somebody's body and try to live through them. So the, the, those kinds of places are definitely big places for hauntings. Also, 
Another place is bars, you know, where there's a, where there's a lot of alcohol because people are more vulnerable when they've been drinking, they're more open, you know? And so people will hang out at bars and find the host to come on into. So that's another thing that happened. It's very, very common to, you know, to have, um, ghosts are dead people coming into your body. Also at people that are doing drugs like heroin or hardcore drugs, where you go into altered states, drug addicts, okay? <clears throat> they will have a lot of discarnates in them trying to get the high, trying to get the buzz from the, from the drug. So that's another thing that happens. That's a big one that um, people will be inundated with uh, discarnates and it makes it really challenging. It makes it even more difficult for the drug addict to get off of drugs when they want to, because they have all these beans in them that just want that are craving wanting, wanting the high, whatever that high is. So by clearing out all the discarnates, like I used to work with drug addicts and by clearing out the discarnates, they were able to get off whatever drug they were on. Right. Yeah. You got to clean that stuff out. So Bonnie, it seems that the, one of the themes uh, that you're telling me about with these hauntings is there's always some really um, intense emotion, maybe maybe uh, negative emotions that um, are like the common theme of what causes these hauntings. Is that, mm -hmm. would you say that that's true? Is that the emotional component of it? Yes, definitely. The emotional component, for example, let's just say that someone dies, uh, an older person, they love their home and they die. They don't wanna let go of their home. It's an emotional attachment, okay? Or let's just say that someone's, they know they're dying, they don't want to leave their children or child. There's an emotional attachment, okay? It's, it, it's all about the emotions and that causes us to want to hold on and therefore that, that helps us to be able to stay in this, in this particular earth plane dimension. People that, um, that sometimes get like, uh, un, how can I say, like someone that gets killed Spawn, like let's say someone falls off their roof and dies. Okay, they didn't realize that they've died. That's another thing is people don't know that they're that they have died, but they get there's a lot of emotion because people aren't talking to them. They're talking, but no one's listening, and and it makes you know it creates a upset, creates confusion. Uh, there's a lot of instances where there's sudden deaths. People have car accidents and get knocked, you know, knocked out, not whacked and out of their body, get killed. They don't know they're dead. They're wandering. So in those wanderings and being lost and confused, they will try to go into a host because there's a familiar energy frequency that's going to help them feel like they're at home. Okay. So they'll come into somebody else's body. Um, I mean, that's so common. I mean, everyone needs to understand this. Everyone has hundreds of discarnates in them. No one is free of discarnates. Seriously. So think about that, you know, and then they're attached to your emotions. and one of the things that's important to do is to claim sovereignty over your body, really ain't claiming and owning your own physical form and, and then making it clear that, you know, you're not willing to let other people in, that there's no home for anybody else. It's your temple, your home. And then to be aware of that, especially when you're out drinking, partying, doing drugs or whatever, going to surgery, you need to really be claiming your body so that you don't allow things to come in. Right. I, that's a really interesting point, because I think most people, when they think of hauntings, they just think of a location or maybe an object. But people could be haunted, too. And also with that story you told about your son, he was basically being haunted. Oh, yeah. Right? Or even yeah. hunted would be the hunted, right word. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very scary. Yeah. So, Bonnie, when these ghosts and other energies, when they're haunting places or people, what dimension are they in? Ah, and when they're actually, they are in this dimension, you just don't see them, okay? Because again, remember, we've dropped the physical form, we're dealing with awareness. So if you think about your awareness, you can't grab hold of it, you can't see it, you can't find it. It's kind of like the air, you know, you don't reason you know the wind's blowing because things are moving, that type of thing. It's the same thing, you, you're not going to see uh, a ghost in this dimension unless they um, they present and uh, that ha that does happen. My daughter's act, we were together one time and uh, this man presented and she saw him very clearly, um, but they, they can do that as well. But most of the time you're not gonna see them. They're, they're, not, they're not visible with your eyes. You have to shift your awareness into the third eye 
or even just your own senses, then you begin to sense, feel, hear, know that there's someone present. Okay, but basically they are in this dimension. They're right here, but again, they're in awareness. And again, how we present, there, there's an actual word for it. It's not coming to me in this moment, but um, where we can present, even though we're not in physical form, we can bring our energy field and present and people can see us. So that people have that ability. And oftentimes those that do that, they're very aware that they're dead and they're intentionally stepping into a frequency that they can begin to show you who they are, what they look like. But the most human beings that have died, they're just going to be uh, consciousness and holding that, that energy of themselves. And when you see them, you will see them looking like, like who they died as. But keep in mind when, you know, with that, this lifetime, what they look like in another lifetime is going to be different. So basically we've got dead people looking like themselves and just normal people like most everyone. And they just have an emotional attachment to something pretty simple. So could you give us a quick tip on what to do if we think our home is haunted? Yeah, bring the light in. I would just, you know, call in the light. You know, everyone's got the ability to call in the light, whether you believe it or not. You do. Everyone's connected. So what I would do is I would bring in the white flame, put it in the entire house. I would create an opening right up into the light of home. And I would call in loved ones. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter who the discarnate is. When you intentionally call in the loved ones of that discarnate, that's who will present. Okay, so call in loved ones to say, yep, calling in your loved ones, calling in your beloveds, and then also the emissaries, and then ask for the, the loved ones to help take this discarnate home or take, you know, take, start clearing out the house or clearing out the energy. You use that white flame and start spinning it and you move the energy and it make it uncomfortable, but you make sure that you create like a, a vort in like a, a closure, a closure around your building and then, and then the energy goes right up into the light. That means so as that white flame is moving and releasing, energies will be pushed right up into the light. So that does work and anyone can do that, anyone. And there's an upcoming clearing for Halloween and that's called Cursed and Haunted. So in that clearing, what are you gonna be clearing specifically for the haunted piece? Um, well, it depends on, it'll be where the people are living. So I will be working with releasing the frequencies in the area, the home, the office, the building, wherever that is. So it will be that kind of thing, you know, so we'll be pulling in uh, whoever's attending, they'll be needing to hold awareness in their, in their mind of whatever building or their house or their home that they want to have cleared. So then we can, you know, do a mass clearing for however many people show up. I feel this is a special one because you don't really don't have the, uh, like location clearing ones that you do, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this yeah, is yeah. definitely everybody should be checking it out. I'll leave a link to the description in the description below um, for that clearing. It's coming up October twenty eighth. It's called Cursed and Haunted. Um, any last things you want to say about hauntings, Bonnie? Yeah, I think it's important for people to understand that unless it's demonic or, or you know, galactic or interdimensional, we're dealing with real human beings, real people. And I, it's important to treat them like real people rather than, oh, it's a ghost. No, they're not. Yeah, they might not might, might be a ghost because they're not in, in taking on the physical form, but all of their emotions, their beliefs, their programming, everything that they that they were, they still are in that body until they go into the light. Okay, so we're still holding on to like, if I were to die, and I didn't go, I'd still be seeing myself as this person here, just like with you. And whatever you're living, that's what you'd still be living. So for me, it's important that people understand you're dealing with real human beings, and treat them with as though they're real human beings, and things will go much easier trying to get them out and helping them will be much easier than trying to fight them or, or act like they're, you know, less than or they, you know, they're just some kind of you know, ghost or something. So they, they really are human beings without their body. So I think that's really important. Right. And the reason why they are haunting is usually because of trauma or confusion and things like that. Yep. So by yep. appealing to that part and helping them with that, it's just, it, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah. Yeah, definitely.
Okay, everybody. So if you're interested in that upcoming group clearing with Bonnie, it's uh, October 28th called Cursed and Haunted. And during those live group clearings, you could actually ask Bonnie questions at the end. And that's it for today. I hope everybody loved this podcast. Um, please subscribe, like this video, share it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, thank you, Cynthia.